Today we're going to load 8K BASIC from cassette into this Southwest Technical Products 6800 computer. Now Southwest sold 8K BASIC for $4.95, basically the cost of making the tape. This is in contrast to the software business model that MITS and Bill Gates had. Uh, Altair BASIC sold for $200, the 8K version. Um, now granted you could get about a 50% discount if you bought some hardware as well, but that $200 price tag amounts to about $900 in today's world, today's dollar. So you can see that there was a pretty significant chunk of money that they were hoping to get for the software. Southwest opinion was there was no way to stop hobbyists and people from sharing software and copying it. So there's really no point in trying to make that a business model. But anyway, in the next video, we will actually do some comparisons between Southwest Basic and Altair's Basic to see the pros and cons of paying for it or getting one that maybe wasn't as good but cost a lot less. All right, before we go and actually load Basic, let's take a look inside this computer and see what the typical hardware configuration would have been in the day to be running something like 8K Basic. If you look here in the very front, we have our CPU card. This is again a 6800 CPU card. And behind that, we've got four of Southwest Technical Products 4K memory boards. So this is a total of 16K of RAM. So it gives you 8K of RAM for the uh, basic interpreter itself, and then another 8K for your program. So this is a pretty good setup. And in fact, this is the maximum recommended RAM configuration using these 4K boards in this computer. Uh, the reason is because these boards consume so much power, about an amp and a half each, um, each one required two 5-volt regulators to supply the 5-volt current the board required. Now, this was not a limitation for long because 8K boards and 16 bo 16K boards came along very shortly after this and, of course, consumed a lot less power per kilobyte of memory, so the 16K limit was no longer really a problem. All right, now back in the back on the um, I.O. bus, we see we have two serial boards. One of those we're going to use to hook to our terminal and the other is going to the cassette interface and this way we can run our terminal at 9600 baud and run the cassette interface at its native 300 baud and not be stuck with a slow terminal. We demonstrated that at the end of our last video. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do a video cut and close this machine up so that I can stack the cassette recorder and cassette interface on top. As we've seen in a couple of the earlier videos, the monitor ROM in this computer made it very easy to load and save programs from paper tape or cassette. And AK Basic is just another program, so loading it is the exact same procedure. Now, it does take a while because it's large, but nothing special has to be done because it's basic. All right, I'm gonna move in a little bit closer here so we can watch the terminal and these lights over here on the uh, cassette interface. All right, I'm going to enable receive data. So this allows data from the cassette to come in and I'm going to press play on the cassette and then type the load command. And that's all we got to do. Pretty soon we'll see data here. There it is. Uh, at that point, now we know basic is actually loading and we can go off and uh, get a cup of coffee and come back in a little while. Now, if you're extremely observant, you might've noticed I have a slightly different prompt here than the swap bug dollar sign. And I also proceeded the load command with a two. You've seen before, you can just type L, it comes through the console, or you could type OL, which came through the optional port, which is port zero. Um, what I've done is made a slightly modified version of swap bug that allows me to specify any of the eight ports uh, for the load and punch commands. And so here you can see we're coming in through port two, which is where I have my serial port. The reason for this, there's several. Number one, it just makes a more flexible system, but actually one of the reasons is because of um, swap bug, excuse me, Southwest's own 8K BASIC. It can save to any of the uh, eight ports and it can load from any of the eight ports, but certain hardware is supported in those eight ports. The only ports that support the serial boards that uh, Southwest sells are ports two and three when you're in 8K BASIC. So that means I need to load from port two or three as well, which was not supported natively in the uh, swap bug. So I modified it, and, and this is what made computing so fun in the days. This is the kind of thing you would have done to tweak your system, and it would have made you proud to have it up and running that way. All right, we're going to come back in a little bit when this is close to uh, loading and um, check in. Meanwhile, we'll do a video cut and wait on that. All right, this should be nearing completion. We'll be looking for our prompt to come back here, and then this light will shut off here shortly. This whole process took about, um, or will have taken about 14 minutes. 
um, which is painfully slow to be uh, truthful. And if you did this on paper tape, it would take uh, over 40 minutes to do it. Now for 8K of, uh, oh, there we go, we're done. See our light is off and we're back to our prompt. Let me go ahead and stop the tape. All right, um, painfully slow process because this is all in Motorola S record format. There's about a three to one overhead versus straight binary. So that 8K of programmer loading actually took 24K of data coming in at uh, 300 baht. So that's why this took so long. Now, um, once they came out with 4K basic, they let people endure it. 8K basic, it was getting so long that they finally um, went to a two stage loader shortly after this version came out where a small binary loader is loaded as an S record very quickly, that turns around and loads BASIC itself as a binary file. So then the whole thing completes in four or five minutes like you'd expect. And we'll demonstrate that in the uh, next video. All right, so this load has completed. The program is in memory. Um, it automatically set addresses A048 and 49 with the address of the BASIC entry point. Again, this is so that you can jump to it with the G command from swap bug or mic bug, and you don't have to know the start address, the program can essentially tell the monitor what the start address is. All right, so we are in basic. Let me go ahead and zoom in, since we don't care so much about the cassette interface anymore. All right, so happens to have the same prompt I use for the my monitor modification. So we can uh, print two plus two, says it's four, uh, we put in a simple program. And let's see. And print the line number and next I. See, it takes a little bit of a pause to start it up, but that seems to work pretty well. Um, interestingly, the um, if I could type, the delete character in this is control O. So if I wanted to put in a new statement, uh, let's say A equals 34.56, and I meant 34.57, you would type control O, which is the backspace, it shows an underscore, and then you could type in the seven. Except uh, that lock this keyboard. Let me do a video cut and unlock this because I don't want to go back through this uh, this whole load procedure again. Somehow I've locked this terminal up. Hold on. All right, so interestingly, this particular terminal would not be very compatible with this version of BASIC for which delete is control O. Um, I do that, it locks the key, it locks this keyboard up. You saw that little lock message up there. So I'll have to avoid using uh, control O on this um, terminal. Now, interestingly, Southwest told, chose control O. Um, other vendors, for example, Altair, they used shift O and that carried over into the SOL 20 as well. You may wonder why that was used as backspace. It comes from the, uh, the teletype actually. If we go over here and take a quick look at the teletype, you can see the O has a back arrow on it. So they chose to use the O as a control O or as a shift O to send essentially what you might think as an operator to be a back arrow. Uh, shift O on the teletype sends the underscore character as we would know it on a modern terminal. And then control O a case is a control O, but um, this particular terminal does not like that. So we'll have to remember that in the future. Okay, so you've written this program and now you would like to save it. Let me run it, make sure it's still the right thing. Okay, to, to save the program, you type save and then you can give it a port number. And again, we're on port two because this basic only supports serial ports um, on ports two and three. All right, so to record, let me uh, turn on record data. I'll press record on the tape. I'm gonna let it record just a little bit of header and you press return. Pretty soon we'll see the data light on over here. Uh, well, there it is. All right, and that's complete, so I can now stop it. We'll go ahead and turn that off and we'll get ready to play it back here. Let me go rewind that tape. We'll do a new. 
Okay, we're empty. I'm going to rewind the tape. Press play, and now I can say load number two. We'll watch for the data to start flickering here. Hopefully I rewound to the right spot. All right, there it looks like we got the data. Kind of went too far, it looks like. All right, and that's complete. We're back. And you can see our program was back in memory. All right, so there we go. We got the process of loading 8K Basic. And we typed in a simple program, saved it, and then reloaded it from cassette. We did it all through port two, and that is supported by uh, 8K Basic. But as you saw, in order to really utilize that with a standard serial board that they offered, I actually had to patch the SwatBug EEPROM or, or the SwatBug ROM, make my own EEPROM to make that happen. So again, uh, early days, nothing was smooth, but uh, that's kind of, again, what made this all fun. Now in the next video, I'm gonna take a more detailed look at this basic versus Altair basic. I'm gonna have an 8800 in this computer side by side, and we'll see what kind of differences there were between the $200 or $900 basic and uh, this free one, and see what the pros and cons of each were.